Hello viewers, I'm SB and welcome back to Endless Space 2. I'm making some changes to our science plan here. I was looking at autonomous construction versus our current amount of science. This is this is how things were when we left them. Uh, and I realized something. We're actually going to waste science if we do this. Autonomous construction currently only costs us 692. Uh, we have a science surplus of 5931, and you can only bank up to twice your current science per turn. So, if we research autonomous construction, it's only going to spend 600 of the overflow, and then we're going to get less than our total science per turn overflowing into science surplus. It's just, it's just wasteful. It's just burning stuff. So I think we should grab Xenoanthropology as well. And if we're going to do these both this turn, we put Xenoanthropology in front, because it still has a full omniscience bonus. So now we're producing even more science, but Xenoanthropology is spending enough that we're not wasting any. So actually, this is probably a net... Uh, this is like a significant net improvement in the amount of actual science that we generate and bank over this turn while still getting us autonomous construction in this. And then I think, um, and Xenoanthropology is the right play for a couple of reasons. Number one, obviously we need national museums, but also the Pooster program uh, matters because we are actually one planet over our colonization limit. So we can get some, uh, we can get some approval back from that immediately. And then we're going to have to start thinking about bigger ships. I think the uh, I think war with the Riftborn is both unavoidable and actually almost certainly profitable. So uh, we're going to need to pick up neural robotics and extreme atmospherics. We have both of those resources exposed in systems, but are we on the correct planets? We have the antimatter here. We are not on the antimatter world and in, ca in fact cannot be on the antimatter world. All right, well, let's fix that. Let's just uh, plow a whole bunch of science into stuff here, actually. So let's get extreme atmospherics and neural robotics and barren world colonization tech is on adaptive bureaucracies. So we want to arrange these such that the biggest and most, uh, the omniscience bonus that is the largest is being applied at the beginning of next turn. So it looks like uh, unfortunately, they're all 10%. Alright, that's fine. That's fine. We'll do it like this. So yeah, we'll start mining antimatter immediately. It'll take us a turn to get this, but we also have to get the colonization tech that same turn. Okay. We're gonna blaze up these, uh, up these tech quadrants now. Unfortunately, we don't really have much in the way of military at the moment. We have to respond pretty quickly on this. But I think we're getting a lot of good stuff done here. I honestly thought the phase of the game where we weren't able to build mediums because we were stuck researching Genius the Endless was going to be longer. Okay, so this thing ended. Oh, that's a shame. I, it could not have happened at a better time, though, huh? Oh, Living Plague. Uh, free technology, yeah. Ibella's science will continue to climb. It needs to be 1138. We can do that. Is this the declaration? No, this is... More warnings that there will be a declaration. Oh, and in fact, we did we did finish all of those texts in that turn. I wonder why it misestimated the amount of time it was going to take. That's strange. All right, what do we want to do next here? We have um we have the the industry building whose name escapes me. Mega Indie Consultancy, I think, is the cell phone version of it. So, what do we want next? Probably just food, right? gonna take a little while for this to be useful i mean let's grab some basic stuff while population builds and then ultra greenhouses will eventually be good uh, also we probably want to cut the spoils of war act for a little while oh, i should have done that last turn actually and we could replace it with green fertility dirty hands Honestly, Dirty Hands isn't bad. Brain Over Bucks is usually something I like a lot, but we're actually very negative on uh, dust right now. This makes me a little nervous about doing that. Maybe we should try to fix that. Get, like, trade companies going. Oh, hold on. Okay, interesting. So, we can research stuff as high as the fourth tier. The science bonus is letting us skip this tier 
researching here, and then because we research two things in this tier, this would be next, but because of the science thing, we can skip it and go straight to tier four. <coughs> Unfortunately, going straight to tier four is of somewhat limited value because we don't currently have the incomes to take advantage of any of the weapon tech up here. Uh, we could go for universal aerodynamics, skip the normal boarding pods and go straight to the fancy boarding pods, and then just go boarding pod heavy. Try to solve our problem that way. Plus, that does give us more command points. Yeah, okay, let's try that. Don't think air troops are good at all. There's nothing wrong with air troops in, like, in a vacuum, but the fact that the AI keeps their armies, um... Words. Keeps their armies infantry heavy for the entirety of the game means that air troops are, are all just almost always... Against the AI, air troops are always going to be worse than tanks. Just because of the way they uh, the way they build their stuff. So why don't we do this this way? Grab impactless sites, which gives us both a dust building and access to the hero portion of the marketplace. And we're going to have to keep ourselves solvent through um, resource sales for a while. Uh, do I want to do anything in particular with my detector? Does it want, do, do I actually want to just hover here with it? We have vision of ships coming up the lanes, so I think we can just hold here for a moment. We'll know if there's a reason that we need to change that up. Alright, so funds are being born. So which... Which thing are we going for next? Which endless tech are we going for next? Wealth of the endless obviously is pretty good. Uh, just plus 15% resources. I do love resources. Uh, Might of the endless is actually remarkably useless for, uh, for space battles. Let me think here. Actually, if we're... Hold on. If we know the scientists are going to remain in charge, is it better for me to just research three things from this tier so that we can skip up here and grab this? Like, I'm just trying to think about speeding up our science victory as well. Uh, probably, right? So we grab, like, hardened alloys for command points, basic boarding pods, and then one of the weapon techs. We're bringing in Hyperium much faster than we're bringing in Titanium, so maybe that's a good enough reason to do this. And again, just try to make sure that we're running the uh, highest research value stuff at the beginning of each turn. Yeah, we probably don't need hardened alloys right away. I mean, I'm shuffling deck chairs here. That's not really <laughs> accomplishing much. I mean, it probably is. Probably the, um, the estimation that we're given there is not correctly taking into account shifting values of omniscience. All right, after we finish this, we actually need the National Museum probably more than we need the Culture Jam Center. You know what we really need? Predictive logistics. Okay, and then, yeah, we'll just run uh, Dirty Hands for a little while. We can afford to take that hit, and uh, we could really, really use the extra effective extra industry. A lot of stuff to build in a lot of places here. Okay. We do have some incoming now. Aw, Unnatural Wastelands ended. That's a shame. I was, I was using that. So what do I want to do here? Well, one thing I want to do is ship some population over. Let's see, that's a... Oh, I have population being shipped, right? That's what this is? Yeah. Okay. Thought ahead. Occasionally, past SB makes an okay decision or two. Right, we need to get this immediately. That is the only thing that matters now. We maybe need to pick up that tech that lets you... Um, <laughs> a tech that lets you get the... Uh, lets you buy things out with dust. Might be worth grabbing. Although we don't have any money, I mean, we have we have money, we have goods, things that can become money, and then probably just like right into wealth of the endless from there. Maybe even before we get this military tech, I probably 
Oh, no, I already finished the weapons tech. Yeah, like, I probably don't need that stuff that badly. Like, hardened alloys is a real distant concern. We don't have enough ships for the uh, for the extra command points to actually be me meaningful yet. Yeah, so maybe we do it like this. Get ourselves a little bit more... Uh, a little bit more resource output. We probably do want to grab the design for a medium ship. Throw this in here. And I guess if this isn't actually going to affect our research rate, if we're getting 13 turns on this anyway, we may as well. Yeah, may as well do it in this order. Okay, let's try that. Uh, they canceled my law. Please, please don't do that. I'm using that law. All right, hopefully we have enough goods to actually uh, actually make some moves here. Okay, that ended, which is a shame. We were we were using all that science too. Uh, do we need approval on Wardan? We do not. We can afford to take the experience boost right before we finish a big building too. That's a good time for it. All right, so we would need 28 potatoes to renew the boost. Let's go visit the market. We're going to have to go to the market anyway here, so. Can we buy 28 potatoes? We totally can. Oh, what am I doing? I, th <laughs> I have other sales that need to be made. All right, so we can probably sell, like, I don't know, 85 of these and try to maintain some stock, but. Do we need to be banking antimatter? Probably. This will this will hold us down for a while. Uh, except I do have the ability to now actually buy things. All right, what do we need next here? We got our four points of population. We have the ability to inhabit gas planets now. And these are both pretty industry-heavy gas planets. We're only at 74 industry. Like, we need to, uh... We need to still get some basic stuff going. In fact, this is worth rushing. Let's, let's get this planet capable of producing stuff as quickly as possible. Or this planet, this system, rather. Because this is where we're going to need... This is going to be our shipyard. It's going to have to be. So given our rate of... No, given our rate of growth, we need food. We need more settling space, but we need food first. Uh, this is actually pretty good here. Uh, it's probably actually worth just letting this finish first. I don't think I want to try to buy anything out over there. Too much development to do yet. Well, we're not growing very quickly here anymore. We can fix that. Then get me another planet. Honestly, it's going to take us long enough to fill up our population space here, even with this, and I think it's worth doing predictive logistics first. Alright, so we're continuing to gain science rate... Uh, I think we should probably have at this ship, right? Scare them, make them feel like it is not a good idea to declare war on me. And I'm going to keep shooting probes down these lanes. We need vision all the time. Alright, so they have some mediums. Yeah, scary. They have their first medium coming in in this fleet. You know what else we kind of need? I think I may actually grab high energy magnetics, just try to make it as safe as possible for us to actually defend this planet. So these these techs are both ten percent. Yeah, alright. Well, that will have to do for now then. So 
So we do already have the tech for the mediums. The problem is industry. Yeah, our highest industry system is 222. We are in a bad place. So we can't fight this fleet. I'm gonna... I'm worried that like attacking this fleet might result in us having... Uh, scaring them a little bit and making them less likely to want to fight us. But it might result in them being angry and wanting to fight us more. We can shatter time on a whim. You oh, I can't do this again. Peril. Not great. We need a little bit more time before the war. It's the core problem here. We're not ready yet. Maybe if we ask them very nicely, they'll back up for a while. No, wait, I can't do that. I just tried. Right, well, we definitely merge you, and then maybe we go into disband mode? Like, would they attempt a ground assault? We need to, uh, we need to upgrade our troops. Rebalance them a little bit here. Uh, I'd really like to do that, but unfortunately we cannot. Alright, that'll help us win any ground battles. Are they, what, what's their manpower distribution, can we tell? It is entirely infantry. And this fleet really doesn't have a lot in the way of manpower. Okay, I think we can safely hangar our fleet. They're not going to be able to do anything to our systems. Not with uh, not with an invasion force like that. We can keep the ships healthy. They'll blockade Ceres and it'll get uh, bad resource outputs for a little while, but it's not in a lot of danger. And we can get working on uh, medium ships. Uh, I definitely can't take minus industry at this moment. Okay, the amoeba would like us to explore the galaxy or possess three influence buildings. I don't, honestly, I don't care about either of these. Like, we're at 10% of the galaxy right now, and it's going to be very difficult for us to actually search since we can't find a place to go. So I guess I'll do this one. At some point, we'll possess three influence buildings. All right, we're being manipulated on Ceres. That's annoying, but not like the end of the world. And there's the proper declaration, but they can't actually attack our planets. Seventeen turns on Wealth of the Endless, huh? Ah, uh, we're only loyal. We need more approval. Maybe we cut Cram Exam Act. We could pass brains over bucks in its place and just, like, figure it out. So what's our science output right now? 5479. Yeah, given the size of our science, uh, of our of our output, the percentage bonus from being happy has to be bigger than the amount we lose from the flat bonus here. Yeah. Alright, that was good. And then, in its place, if we do run brains over bucks... We're looking at minus 244 per turn. That's survivable. We can deal with that. Especially since we now have um, dust buildings that we can actually build. So I probably want to grab Warden 2, right? I think it's just better than 3. There's not as much food, but we need to like be able to build stuff. And we have plenty of food income. We'll be fine. Man, this is uh, this is a harsh situation. Seventeen turns to build a medium. All right, here we'll be at just about we'll be close to three hundred. That's a much more reasonable build time, but it's still too long. And we need to edit this ship. Like it's not actually a good ship yet either. Oh, that's a potentially a defensive slot if we want it to be. I think we're not going to go missile weapons. Actually, I should, before doing this, we should have a look at the ships they brought over to fight us. 
and the ships they are still bringing over. The new ones are all projectile defenses. This one's largely energy defenses. No weapons at all, actually. That's very interesting. Literally zero weapon systems. Huh. What is it packing? I assume it's just here to serve as a tank, basically? Certainly interesting. And it's largely on energy defenses. Okay, so, obviously, I feel inclined to use the sync lasers. Or, or the, you know, the pinch beams. One of these kinds of things. Looking at 42 DPS cut to 21 at non-optimal ranges versus 25 at all ranges. Probably it's better to go with this. We can, we can probably make this work. But we also have the boarding pods. You know, maybe the boarding pods are actually a really, really important idea. Especially with them having gone all projectile defenses. Like, we need... We don't have the production to make our own ships fast enough, so we need to really maximize... Our use of the ships that are in the air. Not just ours. Theirs as well. So what do we want to put in this support slot? We probably don't need another engine. Should probably do this though. Oh uh, yeah, we probably don't need another engine. We're looking at a pretty short distance here. So maybe it's repairs. Repair ship during battle. And this will help us keep our, uh, our little ship safe while we're fighting. All right. That's... what am I doing? Clicking on the wrong system. Dust cost is in the neighborhood of 16. We probably can't get anywhere near that. Yeah, not at these prices. Well, we could certainly afford to sell... in fact, like, we could sell all of this, right? We don't actually need that. Um, and then let's sell these. The thing is already in the queue. So we don't need to hold on to any uh, strategic resources for the purpose of building it. So we can sell. And we can sell everything we have. Because the thing is, we're like in actually a pretty desperate situation here, I think. And then we're going to make more resources and like, we'll be fine. But I think we need to get this thing out of the hangar immediately. You know what? I'm just realizing I didn't mess with its uh, defenses at all. Well, it turns out uh, they're mostly energy now these ships so i do have to fiddle with the design a little bit more which is a real shame because now i'm gonna have to dig up some dust for retrofitting mostly but not entirely energy weapons what are we talking about here 623 623 should be doable right we've had another turn of resource generation yeah Yeah, extremely doable. Alright, so this is a two-turn trip. We arrest the spies, because everybody loves it when you arrest spies. And then... Right, we're actually devoted. We're almost ecstatic everywhere. Well, <laughs> we're ecstatic in many places, is maybe a better way to put that. Okay. Okay. So we're showing a weapons value of 1518 and a defensive value of 569. Their ships are manpower light, actually. This thing only has 15 manpower in it. We could take it over with the first volley. Oh, that was dangerous. They have made an error that I accidentally capitalized on. I mean, I had that information, too. I should have thought of that when I was putting together the, uh, the idea here. So let's see, your three command points. Okay, so what we really want to do here 
is as soon as we start the turn, we mash this button, and then as soon as this ship is moving, we pop these guys out of the hangar. So we want to get a big space battle going here. It would be best if we could combine our forces, but the AI may be able to, uh... Maybe able to computer reflexes us before that happens. Okay. We're all gathered up. There's the battle. Okay, so that system's locked. We'll deal with it. Uh, we got PEV scale accelerators for free, which is fine. That's a, that's a cool tech. Uh, we're gonna battle. We'll deal with it. Uh, yeah, I... This doesn't matter. We're never gonna get that done. That quest is probably outside of our range of influence. Speaking of our range of influence, we're about to pick this up. That'll be really nice. Uh, okay. You over here... Probably... Want to drop this guy back to the Tundra world, I assume? For the extra science. And then, yeah, just keep growing. We got a lot of space to work with here. That's not what I wanted. Alright, this is going to be a pretty important battle. If this goes well for us and we actually manage to take over their medium and maybe like a couple of other ships, could be good. Uh, they brought in a bunch of tiny protectors, but they didn't merge the fleets before attacking. They only get to use the fleet they actually initiated with while we get our stuff all merged together. So that's actually really good for us. A lot of these ships are very light on manpower. I think this is going to go well. I think the, the Smasher has enough health and defenses to survive the initial volleys. They would like for this battle to be at... Actually, their stuff is really schizophrenic. They would, they would mostly like for this battle to be at, like, medium to short range. This thing is the only one that, that likes long. So let's start as far back as possible. Yeah. All right. Good luck, everybody. I think this should go all right for us. A lot of uh, a lot of this is going to come down to how the firing arcs line up. Uh, if we get if we can get their their medium ship in our firing arc. Okay. Yeah. This is great. The our medium is going to have going to have real, a real clear shot against everything they have. So this is going to come down largely to boarding pods. Our ships. I mean, our ships have weapons. Okay, they fired for the distant flotilla first, which I think is actually very good for us. Come on, give me that ship. Alright, awesome. So that thing is going to provide some cover for us. Whoa! I thought it didn't have any weapon systems. What the hell was that? Alright, boarding pods hit. It looks like this one probably will still have manpower left, so we need to tap it again. We'll get control of that. Nope, never mind. Those That incredible number of missiles is coming from the small ships. Aww. That, that really sucks for our boarding parties. We fired them onto that ship as it was blowing up. Yeah, so I think what we're seeing here is swarm missiles. So, scary looking more than anything. Looks like we don't quite have the angle for the boarding pods. Oh no, here they come. Never mind. They have been launched. We're gonna need another round. I think this thing's gonna survive that long though. It looks like we're gonna get control of this as well. So what do we get there? Medium and two smalls? Uh, provided that the boarding pods do hit this thing before it dies. We only got one boarding party on, but yeah, good enough. Yeah, good enough. Okay. A decisive victory indeed. That's big for us. Let's merge these up. Okay. So what on earth is the deal with this thing? It literally doesn't have any weapon. They just left a bunch of the module slots empty. It is actually just here to tank because it is a it is a guardian and it tends to be targeted.
Well, I mean, we can use it for that purpose too. It can protect the Smasher. So now we attack and just drive these guys off, right? My fleet cannot afford one action point. Ah, because some of the ships in this fleet do not have their action point. Uh, our ships should still have their action point. Yeah, okay. It's probably good that they lose their action, that like the, their action point is not refreshed when you take control of them, because that could lead to some exploits. And I, I, I assume this will be them fleeing. Okay, they would like this to be a short-range battle, so we will make it a long-range battle. We don't need to watch it, but they're going to run. Yeah, okay. Cool, we did it. Uh, we should probably run that ship off. 9359. We could probably just send our accelerator, right? Yeah, he should be well up to that task. Except he has no movement points, because he yeah, engaged in a bunch of combat and stuff. Alright. Oh, I forgot to mm, I forgot to put out the spoils of war act. Should have cut dirty hands for a turn. Well, actually, I guess we only destroyed like two or three command points worth of ships. I guess it's not that big of a loss. We didn't actually destroy the medium, so we wouldn't have gotten the, wouldn't have gotten the reward for it. All right, we're in a better spot already. These ships down here, these mediums that we saw, these are not empty wraiths, though. These are real, violent medium ships. Okay, more pressures on you. It would be cool if we could um, cool things down just a little bit for a little while. We definitely cannot rush another ship. I think it is important that we get the National Museum done. We can queue up another Smasher next turn. Once we have the resources again. I think I'm faster than he is. I don't, I don't think he'll be able to run forever. We just keep him from blockading and uh, and reducing the resource output of our systems. I think the chase is probably worth it. Man, we need... We need dust. Well, Wealth of the Endless will help. We're in no position to attack here. We really, really have to play very cautiously. So yeah, their ship does only have seven movement. We will catch up to it. Oh, hey, there's all of our influence back. That's right, it's not that crucial that we finish this museum. Let's get that smasher going. I was about to say, that's the, uh, that's the same icon that's used for a notification that somebody's headed toward a victory condition. I was going to be like, really already? Okay, so they're bringing this thing up. It has eight manpower. These are both pretty full, but we could get uh, we could get real lucky here. So I need thirty three hundred dust in order to do repairs. Oh, apparently I'm mining this stuff now. Well, we need we need to make that repair money. So oh, this this thing's already in the queue, right? So we can go ahead and sell everything else. Everything else is safe. So we have money for repairs, and we're building toward doing another, uh, what do you call it? Doing another buyout. Not of one of these, but probably, like, of an accelerator or something not too distant in the future. Or maybe, like, helping Pardalis push this along in a turn or two. Maybe. But I think we should be in position to survive this. Using their Wraith as cover. I think we should have that. I'm going to want to hit attack as soon as they enter the system because I do not want to give them a chance to get anything else into position with it. Okay, so let's lock that up. Okay, it, honestly, like there's not a lot to do on a lot of these turns. We have a lot of our systems pretty locked in. I guess maybe the smart thing to do is to save money for this, and we'll just buy out, like, the last two turns of it, maybe? Alright, so let's... 
We are not predicted to win this. What, uh, what is the range that they want? Okay, they're all railguns. They want the shortest possible range. I'm going to... Let me think. How do I think they're going to do this? Because we definitely want the Smasher to be in a position where it can shoot that thing. I think I'm going to put the Smasher mid and the Wraith mid and the two smaller ships up here, maybe? I kind of want... I want the Wraith to serve as a bodyguard for the Smasher, but I think it'll draw fire wherever it is. Probably. Yeah, let's try this. This may well get the job done. Oh, they put everything middle. Okay, that's interesting. I wonder if they're still going to be driven to target the Wraith? My guess is they are driven to target the Wraith as long as they can target it, but they managed to concoct a situation here where they, their guns can't hit it, so they won't shoot at it. That's all right. The, uh, the boarding pod ship is tough, and also their medium ship has eight people on it, so we will immediately capture it, and then, yeah, from here it's easy. And we get to fire with both of our smalls. We probably will not capture... I'm going to guess either of their smalls, because we'll probably kill them first. Uh, maybe we get this one. Oh, we did hit it with three boarding parties. Yeah, we're going to get this. Okay. Yeah, they weren't ready for the boarding pods. They're going to have to, like, back way up and come up with a new strategy that involves uh, actually having manpower in their ships. So let's go Spirit into this fleet. Okay. I think we've probably stabilized. And things are just going to get better for us from here. And we actually will have a better invasion force than they will, and their manpower being stretched as thin as it is... I don't know what they're going to be able to provide to stop us in terms of um, defense forces. You can see our manpower pool is draining rapidly because we keep taking over these ships and then being like, well, there should probably be crew in this thing, right? Should we put some crew in there, maybe? And in the meantime, progress toward the victory condition, ticking rapidly. I'm pretty happy with the way things are going right now. I was a little worried, to be honest with you. Uh, so probably it's not a big deal to focus on science at this moment. Let's, or uh, on industry. Influence is the word I want. Probably it's worth getting the science first now. It might be worth it to stop at Pardalis and just go into defense mode. I don't, we'll see. I'll let that move before I move. And we can get an idea of what that ship's doing when it hits the, uh, the other system over there. Okay, so we're growing. It's not fast. Uh, intensive cultivation logistics actually pretty good here. I guess we should get um, industry first. Oof. Kind of can't afford to get industry first, huh? Uh, Alright, just produce food for a little while. Growth is important. Where are we at on population now? 33 so remember, our 50-point bonus is 20% uh, further reduction on technology costs, which is definitely still valuable. And we keep losing the Dirty Hands Act. Is this what I want to be running? Yeah, I mean, we're all working on important, uh, important system developments. All right, get a couple of turns off of some of these things. Right, there's 50 more influence for us. And it is credited to the system, not to our empire, so this is going to grow even faster now. Not that it matters in this case. Okay, uh, Warden is actually going to be capable of producing stuff. It's incredible. So yeah, they totally did start... I, I didn't do the thing I said I was going to do, which was wait and see what they do when they get to Warden, and then maybe only go to Pardalis. That was the whole plan, and I pressed the button thoughtlessly. Okay, we can finally colonize one of these worlds here. But yeah, I'm feeling, uh, hopeful, honestly. 
I think we're in a really good spot. Speaking of hopeful, uh, I saw this morning that Amplitude announced another expansion for Endless Legend. I thought for sure Endless Legend development was finished. So I'm hoping that the fact that there's a new expansion after all this time means that they came up with an idea that they thought, like, probably what happened, I'm hoping, is that they were done, that was the plan, and then somebody had an idea, and they were like, well, no, this is too good, we have to do this, right? Because that's the version of it that ends with us getting the best, uh, the best expansion, right? Uh, so, 100% for absolute certain, when that comes out, day of release, there will be a series. Let people know that now. You probably had already guessed, but just to make it explicit. All right, these guys are just going to run away again. I don't know why they even came back. Maybe they issued the return order before we took the their uh, spirit. So we know they have at least one spirit still down here somewhere. Because we saw two of them at Baten. Uh, we lost the probe ship in combat, so we don't have access to it uh, to recheck their uh, their current fleet position. But also, I kind of don't care enough to build one. I don't think it's a big deal. Uh, this is only 10 industry. It's almost certainly wrong to build that. Why don't we grab... Yeah, let's grab this thing. Wow, that's going to take forever. And then once we have that, these become a little bit more valuable. I guess maybe let's do th do it this way. The, I mean, the 10 industry will still have some effect here. We're getting pretty low on food, and we've already built the good food building. Yeah, I mean, it is what it is. Mostly we're just burning time until technology finishes. Still improving our science output, although... I guess we've gotten a lot of that done already. We're never going to get out of Chapter 1 of our faction quest because we weren't able to find another constellation anywhere. This is pretty ridiculous. Ah, uh, we're so close. We're going to catch up with him at the next, uh, the next system. Yeah, he's done for. Okay, that came to an end. We definitely want to reboost this. We're going to need 35 space potatoes. I don't know who is selling all this stuff to the market, but I really, really appreciate it. And the Riftborn probably have other feelings about it. Okay. So we'll, uh, we'll refigure our fleets when the Smasher arrives. It might be time to get aggressive, honestly. It's worth considering, at least. So now we're actually really good on influence, and we can consider running some fancier laws. Cool copies might be worth doing. It's 140 cost. We cut, like, dirty hands for it, because we still have a lot of growth space in most systems. We've kept out here. We need that lava colonization tech. Altair, I guess, is not really going to have that much growth room, but, like, Fatia could really use a food boost. Ceres could really use a food boost. But still, it's not even that much. A ward will definitely be able to make use of all that. It's actually quite a few, quite a bit of food here, too. But maybe I do want Dirty Hands up because we're really, really slow builders. Yeah, let's, let's maintain Dirty Hands. Do I want to cut anything else? Uh, I think we still need the approval from Toys for Boys. Yeah, in fact, we could use a bunch more approval. Uh, but if we cut Toys for Boys, we would lose Devoted almost certainly. And we need that science boost. So I guess we're going to um, sit. Just going to chill on this for a while. Uh, we should probably rush some stuff, actually. We definitely have resources to sell. Are all of my systems uh, level 2? Yes, okay. In that case, we do not need to hold on to any of these. And we could sell some more stuff. I should probably actually be careful with our strategics, given the situation that we, we find ourselves in. So we probably can't really rush too much here. Let's do rush this, though. 
It's going to be 20 food plus 10%, plus we're going to take... Is it this system next? Or is, th is it this planet next? Or maybe this planet? You know, three food per citizen is not that big of a deal. And this will give us the industry to actually get some other stuff done. Ah, but... Old planets are actually good sources of food. Better than they look like. I don't know. It's not a, not a decision we have to make right now, so we won't. Alright, let's refigure these fleets. I probably want to put both the Smashers together. So, like, the two Smashers and the Wraith, I think? Let's eject you. Not you, sorry, you. Okay. This is a lot of damage to get through. Yeah, they want a truce. Of course they do. I'm going to refuse it for now. Maybe that was uh, unwise. 280 dust per turn for 13 turns. Does solve some of our dust problems. And we could come and get some of their planets, maybe. We're already at our colonization threshold, though. Riftborn population are good researchers, though. Let's refuse. Let's try to get aggressive on them. Let's see if we can actually uh, take a system or two. It might be worth it. We will continue to deal with our dust problems as we traditionally have. All right, and we can we can catch them here. Let's pay attention to this. I'm gonna try to get to this system and get into guard mode or launch an attack or something. We can stop chasing this guy around. Okay, he's gonna retreat, and we're gonna have to catch him again. But we can absolutely do that. What is this? I do not care about this at all. Really, the Riftborn guy has the system producing the most food. You know what? Actually, that makes sense, though. Um, if it's judging by this number rather than by gross production, um, the Riftborn systems will be high because the Riftborn aren't eating, right? So they're not, uh, none of their food's getting spent. Okay, uh, so we just, what, what is this thing's optimal range? Doesn't matter, and you would like to be at long range. So we'll press this button, you'll run away. We will pursue you. Because there is no escape. Except you seem to have disappeared. <laughs> and we, for real, need to start building some dust stuff. So, wow, that's a lot of building. It's a lot of turns of building. Alright, let's make an interplanetary transport network first. We can shift some people over. After we have it, and get get the advantage of all of that industry. Oh yeah, I should sell some things. Fair point. Turns out we have it covered. It's possible that they should have come up with an icon for that that isn't the truce icon. Okay, so we have this. We're expanding as much as we reasonably can. Predictive logistics is twice as good as it used to be for us. Actually, right, magnetic field generator in this situation. Uh, do we want that one point of population on that planet? This is, a, this is an entirely dust planet. Actually, maybe we want two points of population on that planet. We could use a little bit of help. It's just a lot of dust, you know? And a lot of dust. So, on Senate, if political leader, plus five approval. On systems. You know, all those systems. That's not bad. We could reduce his upkeep cost, which is what? 43. I don't, yeah. I don't care about that. Alright. Approval on systems. Sounds fine to me. Man, I can't wait for him to get to his top tier and actually have that uh, that percentage science boost skill.
Okay, you guys. You guys need to make the pulvis production, and then this thing. Like, just get me some dust. You can't remain completely insolvent forever. Ooh, they're bringing in a big fleet here. And this time, the Wraith actually has guns. And they waited until they had enough manpower to actually, uh, actually fill their, their medium ships. Smarter. They're getting smarter. If we defeat them, this would be the time to push, probably. So there's a version of this where I uh, go for peace, right? To avoid having to do this fight at all. I'm a little worried about the damage output of that ship. 2436. It looks like they're uh, they're mixing up their ranges too, so they'll be somewhat effective at short or long. So <laughs> this is actually a battle where we will we will want to start at medium. And we have exactly ten command points, so we do get access to all three flotillas. That's useful. Do I want the Wraith in here, or do I want the Spirit? The Wraith has way more health. And since its primary goal is to waste their time, that might be a good way to go. The Spirit has actually considerable damage output. And it's a short-range... Oh, it's a... I was going to say it's a short-range ship, so it'll help counter their missile ships, but it's a railgun. Maybe we should bring this, though. Maybe we should... Skip trying to just survive and capture as much as possible, and instead try to kill as much as possible? No, you know what? Let's lean into our strategy. We have a linear, we know where we're going, let's let's continue to go there. And here we can hopefully catch this guy and lay him out. Ibella's about to be out of stuff to build. This will be an extra 46 dust per turn, that's not bad. And the buyout reduction actually is totally relevant for us. But no, it's probably the Smasher. We're probably just going to need more ships. Oh, you know what? I kind of forgot, but it's worth noting. Um, if we were to cap out this stuff, like the infantry, your infantry stats are used for the effectiveness of your boarding crews. So capping out in infantry damage could actually be worthwhile. I'd have to not use all my titanium as soon as I get it, which sounds crazy. Alright, we're just gonna try to stand and, and fight this fleet. Might be dangerous. We might find ourselves in a bit of a position here. Okay, no more running. That wasn't like a great use of my time, but also this ship was... Unlikely to be a major contributor to combat in any case, so. Alright, we're going rapidly across this system. Uh, are all of the... All the Cultic Ma are... Are we better off having you over here? Actually, it doesn't matter. And yeah, we need to engage pulvis production everywhere think about if we were positive on dust and still had all these resources to sell think how good that would be all right let's figure this out so i probably don't want to run spoil uh the spoils of war because what we're trying to plan for here is a victory via boarding pod. Their most dangerous ship is a missile ship. So we probably want a turtle on them. Hate these rail guns. I really wish that these ships we were capturing were bullet ships. Yeah, we probably want a turtle on them. They have exactly enough command points. No, they don't. They have nine. They can't put anything in their third flotilla. Okay, <clears throat> that's helpful. Yeah, I think this is the right play. We just split our ships up. I guess there's a question of which uh, which medium goes where. Since it is definitely the case that they will only have ships in these two flotillas. I want to put the Wraith in a place where it can be targeted. 
I think this is right. Okay, they split their two ships up. They did not put their attack ship in the same place that we put the Wraith, which is maybe going to turn out to be a problem for us. Okay. I like this flotilla pathing. It unfortunately is not going to be able to fire much in the early battle, but it's it's going to be able to shoot at the backsides of all these ships late in the battle when they can't fire back. All right, so there's some uh, there's some swarm missiles going on there. Oh, we actually are hitting it with some of the boarding pods from this ship. It's down to about half manpower. No, it's like 60%. We're going to lose this ship before we uh, before we get control of that one. Come on, fire another volley. Okay, it did get the volley off. And somehow, almost none of the boarding pods actually made contact. For no reason. It is as though the boarding pods from this ship emptied the second the ship disappeared. Yeah, so we're going to mostly lose this battle because of firing arcs, which is a thing that it seems like you have no way of affecting while setting up battle. That really is a shame. I hope that they make it clearer what the uh, like what the pathways are actually going to look like. It would be really helpful if you could plan based on that. Okay, so we did get control of their their heavy damage medium at absolutely full health. We didn't hit it at all. We're going to get control of this ship too. I assume are you not you're not going to fire again? Okay, there it is. Nope, that's just stars. So no, for some reason, <laughs> our ship does not feel that it needs to fire the final volley. Oh no, there, okay. Invisible boarding pods. So that's pretty good for us, I think. Alright, merge these up and also throw in that thing. And then we can't attack them, but I think we wouldn't attack them. Because we could pull the smasher out, right, and run it with... Run it with just the ships that were already here. Is that worth doing? Because this fleet has a command point. Or has an action point. We could go in. Their phantoms aren't really that damaging until short range. The wraith is the wraith is only a little bit more damaging than a phantom. But we could we could maybe claim the rest of these ships, and even if we lose, we still have their two spirits to use against them next turn. Oh wait, the old spirit could be in this fleet. Yeah, it, it has its command point as well. So this will provide us a little bit of extra cover in case things go awry. This is definitely worth doing then. And we just want to go as close as possible. No, we want to go as far away as possible. There's a good chance they just retreat here. If I were them, I would strongly consider just retreating here. Nope, they want to do it. Okay. Works for me. Yep, and we have a really good boarding pod firing arc. All right, let's see what happens. We may, uh, they may end up losing some ships to the weapons on their ships before we can get a lot of captures. Let's see, aiming for the big one first. I think that may turn out to be a waste. Because I think it is going to die before we, uh, before we board it all the way. Well, it's going to depend on how these volleys time out against each other. It seems like we fire the boarding pods less frequently than the missiles. So yeah, this is going to get destroyed before we take it over. We should be able to get these ships, though. Right, because you're just about to fire another volley, so you won't go for the medium because it's dead already. Nope, and the smalls are getting just absolutely obliterated. <laughs> Okay, well, I mean, I'll take it. The victory, if I had realized that was what was going to happen, I probably would have put on Spoils of War. Honestly, like, relative to our science output now, what we get from the Spoils of War Act is a little bit less impressive. Still, though, things are going well. Population's at 39 and still rising rapidly. Still a lot of room to grow. 
let's uh, let's do one more turn here. I want to finish Wealth of the Endless, and I guess we're also getting a uh, an election. You know, I'm a little worried. If the militarists were to take over the Senate and we lose Oracle of Science right now, I'm not sure how things are ordered. Like, does does our research cash in before the election or after? Because we're only able to research Wealth of the Endless because of the fact that the scientists are in charge, and I'm a little worried that we might uh, we might get in some trouble here. Okay, no, the militarists are nowhere near winning the Senate. Uh, but, just to prevent anything really wacky from happening, let's throw our support behind the scientists. I think we're still going to end up with these three parties. I could see pacifists maybe edging out ecologists. We built some pacifist-relevant stuff lately. Nope, looks like a pretty big win for the parties we expected. No new laws, that's a shame. Alright, so that's two of the Endless Techs finished here on turn 81. We are not that far off of a victory. Especially since we can, this turn, begin researching Might of the Endless. And then we need... Uh, we need two more techs on this tier, and it probably is, like, hyper packs and extreme composites or something, like, just things that we already have facilitating links for. So yeah, in 12 turns, on turn 93, we can start research on the final endless tech. It would actually be better to get this one first. Maybe we should do that. Because the approval is obviously important, yeah. And, like, the, the military endless tech, unfortunately, is just bad. It should give you, like, weapon damage or something. It's already so easy to get troop stuff done. Or, like, a 15% troops capacity on Empire is really not valuable. But 15% extra manpower contribution to battles. That would be good. I don't know, this just seems... Maybe I'm being... Maybe I'm undervaluing it, but this just seems very weak to me. Especially relative to the other endless techs. So anyway, that's the plan. We're going to get two more techs here. We're going to tier skip up and grab Power of the Endless, and then we'll come over here and do the same for Might of the Endless. Or we'll just throw that in the queue, rather, because we don't have to tier skip at all. Yeah, okay, we're doing it. Uh, let's, let's play out the rest of the turn. They brought their Space Invaders back. <laughs> We'll, uh, we'll have at them real quick. I mean, they're just going to retreat. Oh, they didn't have enough health to retreat. Oh, we, we stole one of them. Okay. It's an A2S slug module with additional manpower. Yeah, this is, this is totally a siege vessel. Okay, that, uh, that fits with our understanding of what ships named S Invader do from previous instances. Let's pop you out and you... Actually, that's a Phantom 9. So we'll take these ships together. There we go, that's our, that's our good fleet. And I think it might be time. We just defeated an awful lot of ships. It might be time to get aggressive. I bet they don't have a lot in the way of defenses right now. However, that's the thing for tomorrow. That's going to be it for us for today. Thank you all so much for watching. I'm really pleased with how this game is going, especially given how kind of not great our start was. And this is going to wrap up quickly. I feel good about it. Let's so come back next time to see if uh, I'm being massively overconfident, I guess. And we'll see you then.